Welcome to the underground, you rebel scum. This is the American expat. You'll have to excuse me. I'm a bit under the weather. But I saw this uh, this thing come out. I guess as of today, the, some of the rules are changing for how they classify what counts as an independent contractor and what counts as an employee. And uh, <laughs> it's got me a little bit frustrated. I um, I feel like... I mean, if I was being honest, if I had a plane ticket right now to go to China, I would probably go there because right now it's easier to do business and to get ahead in China, in communist China, than it is here in the United States. They say it's bad to drink coffee when you're sick like this. So don't worry, there was actually nothing in the cup. It was all for show. Normally there is coffee in there, but I thought I could I can't like do the show and not actually drink the coffee, right? Or at least appear to. We gotta keep uh keep with the tradition or whatever you want to call it. It's not really a tradition, it's just never mind. That was a really stupid thing to do. But you know, I, I've been uh, really frustrated today. It might be extra frustration because of, you know, being sick. But, I you know, for the first time in a long time, I turned on the radio and Glenn Beck happened to be on there talking about this. Otherwise, I would have no idea. And he mentioned that uh, they're changing the classifications for what counts as uh, a, a contract worker, independent contractor and employee. And that, you know, this is going to make it so if you do Uber or you do like Airbnb or anything like that, guess what? Uh, you're not going to be doing that for very much longer because the way the new classifications work, those companies will have to hire you. And that comes with all kinds of costs for the company, insurance wise, uh, you know, taxes, that sort of thing. And they're not going to be able to pay it. They won't make any money. So Uber driver, you know, you're trying to use your own property to make a living, to get a little extra money, to get ahead for the flexibility. Well, the, the government just came and said, no, you cannot use your own property to make money because, um, because they said so. And that's not all. Apparently, there's some other regulations coming in for small businesses, very small businesses of any size. It doesn't matter how many employees you have. They come with very steep penalties, uh, you know, like $500 a day, which if you are really a small business can be quite a bit, especially if you're just getting started. It can have thousands of dollars of fines plus uh, prison terms if you, you violate the rules or whatever. Probably something in, a, in line with paying some new tax. You know, when they're talking about taxing the rich, they're actually talking about taxing poor people that try to, to step out of the system that they've built for you. They don't want you to, you know, they're trying to kill the American dream. And like I said, I, I think about China. I've got a checklist here of things that, you know, made it better to be in America, the things that they say China does. And I'm not defending China here because they do a lot of these things. But, you know, it used to be I could say, well, in China they do this, in America they don't. Well, let, let's take a look at the checklist. Okay, oppression of free speech. You would have to be stupid if you didn't think that the government is actively trying to oppress free speech. Sure, they're doing it through their public-private partnerships or whatever, but uh, just the same, they are trying to oppress free speech. No longer just a China thing. Social credit scores. Do you remember when that was so crazy? China's got social credit scores. Well, <laughs> now we have some of those of our own, the ESG stuff. Uh, let's see, arresting journalists. Well, we've seen a lot of that happening in the United States as of late, so you know, put another check mark in there. Let's see, arresting political opposition. Yep, they've been doing that. There's a lot of people who they've been going after. Donald Trump, to name you know one. They've been actively trying to go at him with the legal system, doing everything in their power to prevent him from running for office again. How about... Targeting U.S. citizens or targeting targeting your own citizens, because in the case of China, it's not U.S. citizens. 
uh, even though they do target U.S. citizens with propaganda, but targeting citizens with propaganda and manipulation. Uh, can you tell me, um, is the government innocent of doing that? No, uh, nope, they're doing a lot of that as of late. Um, in fact, they, uh, they make sure that you don't have access to any other information. Remember what I said about the oppression of free speech? They go in hand in hand, don't they? Spying on citizens. You know, we talk about China with all the cameras and that everywhere. Um, well, is the United States not spying on its citizens? They don't have to have cameras. Everybody everywhere has a camera right in their own hand. It's got a camera on the front, a camera on the back, microphones all over the place. And you better believe the government is looking at you when they want to. If they decide that they have reason to, they will. Uh, not only that, if you're getting on the internet, whatever it is that you're doing, yeah, they're, they're spying on you. They know who you're talking to. They know who you're associating with. And uh, if you think the wrong way, you're probably on a list. So there's another one. How about killing a small business, making it so that you can't use your own property to make a buck, to try and get ahead in this awful economy? No matter how many times they say the economy is doing great, I don't care. It's not. And now, if you try to take matters into your own hands and use your own property, they're going to stop you from doing it. Uh, it's not just going to be Uber. I guarantee it'll be a lot of other things that you wouldn't expect. You think you're going to try and get somewhere on YouTube, for example? Well, that might fall under those new classifications. You, uh, They might not be able to do it. I don't know if YouTube would even be able to survive at that point. Or it could just be turned into a social media site that doesn't pay anything. You no longer get to have ad revenue. You no longer get to have any of that. Same thing for TikTok, whatever it is, it'll be over. Well, I uh, that's one place where China's not quite so bad. Sure, they've had some pretty serious violations, I would say, in the past, back when Mao was in charge. And there's been some, uh, some as of late, you know, when it came to like the night market stuff, which if you're not familiar with it, you know, if somebody's out there with like a little food stand, they passed a bunch of rules saying you couldn't do stuff like that. But then again, that's no different from the United States. Every place seems to have, you know, some kind of rule about that sort of stuff. So, uh, but you can still, the small businesses are thriving. If you go to China, everywhere you look, there's a small shop, a restaurant, and it's not owned by the government. No matter what anybody tells you, there are privately owned businesses in China, and there are millions and millions of them owned by regular people who have worked their way up to improve their situation, and that is still allowed in communist China. And now it is not allowed in America. They're making it as hard as they can so that you have no choice but to work for one of these giant corporations because uh, I guess they just hate you and they don't want you getting ahead. They don't want you improving your situation. So I, I look at that checklist and I say, wow, if I'm dealing with everything the same anyway, except that uh, in one place I have a lot more financial freedom, then what in the world am I doing here in a country that absolutely hates me, that doesn't want me to succeed, that wants to do everything in their power to make sure that I don't. What am I doing here? Why am I not over there in China right now trying to get ahead while I still can? I don't care what anybody says. I know that there's all this talk about uh, the economy, and even I have fallen into that trap thinking that China's economy is on the verge of collapse. They have innumerable small businesses ready to take the place of the big ones that fail, and they will survive this better than we ever will because we have killed all of the, the younger generations, I guess you could say, of businesses that would be coming up if the big ones fail. If the economy fails, there's nothing to fall back on. You have no freedom. And uh, they're, they're actively trying to make it worse. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they're acting on behalf of a foreign country who wants to see us wrecked and destroyed. I don't know if it's because they're stupid and they think that uh, Maoist-style communism is a good idea, even though it failed miserably everywhere it was tried. Even in China, they had to, you know, they had to wait for Mao to step aside and put in capitalist reforms for the great Chinese miracle to take place. They figured that out. How is it that we haven't figured that out? We have a bunch of... Oh. Like I said, I am pretty frustrated about this. I think that our government is full of idiots, stupid people that don't know anything about history, that don't care.
and they're going to put this stuff on you and they're going to wreck your life and you're not going to have any way of getting out of it or doing anything about it. Not until it's already wrecked. Well, I, uh, I have the opportunity to do something about it for myself and I have to wonder, <laughs> should I? Maybe, you know, maybe the time has come to go back to China and, uh, and maybe have a better life. Sure, you have all those things on the checklist, oppression of free speech and all of that stuff. But guess what? I know what's expected of me there. I know what I can and cannot talk about. And it's all the same here. I, I deal with the same crap here in the United States, except in China, I still have financial freedom. I can still take matters into my own hands and improve my situation with my own property and my own money. And nobody is going to come and try and stop me. That's, uh, that's a pretty big one if you ask me. Making sure, I mean, what's, what's the first priority in your life? Shelter and food, right? You got to have shelter, you got to have food. Well, the government seems to be determined to make that a hard one to do. You're going to have to eat the bugs that they give you, I guess, because they're going to make it so hard to afford the food that you would normally eat that, um, well, you'll have no choice, I guess. You'll, uh, you'll eat what they give you. Just like what they did when Mao was in charge in China. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, th those are my thoughts. I, uh, like I said, I'm pretty frustrated with the whole thing. Thought I would share that. I wanted to go outside, but I'm just under the weather, as you can tell. I may still go outside. I don't know. Maybe I'll go outside. I'll think of something positive to make a video about another video. And I'll, I'll record that outside in the sunshine and... Uh, hopefully feel a little more positive. But I'll leave it at that. You guys, what do you think? Am I right here? This is ridiculous, this stuff that's happening. I, I, I don't even know what to say. I, I'd be curious what you think about it, though. Would I, would, if you were in my position, if you had the opportunity where you could go to a place where you would have better financial freedom to take care of yourself and to take matters into your own hands, or to sit here and get kicked in the face by your own government, what would you do? Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.